I'm Mr. Holland. Mr. Holland. It's life on staying in your pocket. Oh, I'll, I'll pass it over to the whip. Est-ce que Monsieur Albert peut rester dans le caucus libéral? J'ai pris connaissance évidemment de ce que Monsieur Lightburn a dit. J'entends le rencontrer plus tard aujourd'hui et c'est à peu près tout. So it's so to be determined. Is that what I'm understanding? It's to be determined whether he stays in caucus. Look, I just watched Mr. Lightburn's statement. I'll be meeting with him later today. I'm going to afford him that. It took you by surprise. Did it take you by surprise when you were not expecting it? Again, I just became aware of Mr. Lightburn's comments, and I'm going to afford him the courtesy of discussing it with him directly. What do you think about what he said? I, again, just learned uh, about his comments. I'm uh, obviously considering those, and we'll be meeting with him, and I want to hear he says from him. He says he's been dividing the country. Mm -hmm. Has, is that true? That, that's really all I have to say right now. Mr. Mr. Have you been to UNPs that share his opinion? Have you heard that from various caucus members? That, that that, that's all. I'll, I'll have more to say later, but this is all I uh, will say right okay, now. So I, just, well, well, I, just I, I, I just learned about his comments. I will be considering those. We'll be meeting. I want to give the member, as I would any member, the respect of uh, hearing him, hearing from him directly. So and it sounds like exactly by right. surprise. Is that true? Well, I'll be meeting with the member later, and that's really all I have to say about the issue. Thank you. Mais on va voir qu'est-ce que mon collègue Lightbomb va dire. J'ai beaucoup d'amitié pour lui. Euh, donc, on va entendre, bien entendu, son point de vue. Puis moi, ce que je vous dirais, c'est que présentement, les gens sont tannés. Les gens sont, sont fatigués. Moi, je suis très inquiète de la santé mentale de la population présentement. Mais en même temps, la vaccination, c'est ça qui a fait en sorte qu'on a été capable de passer à travers la pandémie jusqu'à maintenant. Est-ce que M. Lightbomb vous en a parlé, de ces préoccupations concernant la vaccination obligatoire qui était contre ça? Bien, je considère Joël comme un ami, donc euh, c'est sûr qu'on se parle tout le temps. Êtes-vous déçu de la sortie que ça pourrait faire? On va voir qu'est-ce qu'il va dire. Comment on règle ça, là, les, les camionneurs? Parce que c'est pas seulement Ottawa, c'est rendu l'Ambassador Bridge aussi là, qui est bloqué, une grosse voie, Coots en Alberta. Mm -hmm. Est-ce que la stratégie du gouvernement fonctionne? Bien, le premier hier a, a fait une déclaration, je pense, une déclaration forte. Moi, ce que je vous dirais, différentes choses. Premièrement, je l'ai mentionné, il y a de l'anxiété dans la population et, et le convoi euh, fait en sorte que les gens ont une position euh, présentement par rapport à, à ce qui se passe. On est en plein milieu de l'hiver. Euh, et c'est sûr que les gens ont le droit de manifester, mais moi, je l'ai dit puis je le redis, euh, on n'a pas accepté des, des manifestants qui, somme toute, ne sont pas des manifestants, qui sont plus du côté d'une occupation. Alors, est-ce que ça prendrait l'armée, selon vous? Moi, ce que je pense, c'est que euh, le premier ministre travaille présentement avec Ford lui-même puis avec Watson lui-même, donc le maire d'Ottawa, le premier ministre d'Ontario. C'est comme ça qu'on va arriver à une solution. I just get that in English about Ambassador Bridge, about protesters blocking. Can I just get your reaction to that? And mm -hmm. what's the federal response? Well, obviously, I'm very preoccupied with the situation. I think the Prime Minister had strong words yesterday in the uh, uh, take no debate on the situation. Um, I think also that we had to be mindful that uh, uh, this is not necessarily a protest. Uh, and in that sense, while people in our society have a right to express themselves, uh, at the same time, citizens have a right to safety, and our democracy uh, needs to have strong institutions. Has your government ruled out at all using the military? I know your colleague, the defense minister, said the military is not a police force, but as you know, resources are stretched at the municipal and provincial level. So would your government consider bringing in the military in this case? This situation uh, will be dealt thoroughly with the prime minister, uh, the Premier of Ontario and the Mayor of Ottawa, or uh, the Mayor of Windsor, and that's how we'll be able to deal with it. I think we have to have a united front, and that's what we'll have. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Merci. I'd like to hear you on the Ambassador Bridge. Uh, are you, are you, like, first of all, what's your reaction to what's going on there? Are you worried? Are you concerned? This could have serious implications. Correct? Look, uh, such blockades will have serious implications on our economy, on our supply chain. Uh, I've already heard from automakers, heard from food uh, grocers. Uh, this is really s a serious cause for concern. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I hope that the blockaders or occupiers or protesters uh, stop their protesting because this is having a serious impact on people's livelihood and, and our economy. But what's the federal government doing? To well, I've, uh, you know, uh, reached out to my provincial counterpart, Minister Maroney, and I 
offered my assistance. Uh, I've spoken with my colleague, Eric uh, Kuzmarczyk, the Member of Parliament for Windsor. So we're going to, uh, as, as we always have, extend our hand, offering support to any of the jurisdiction in whatever support they need. But it's not federal jurisdiction? You're saying it's entirely provincial? It's a policing matter. It continues to be a policing matter, yes. For the province? Yeah. For, for, for the city and for the province. Even yeah. though it's on the border? It, well, it's, it's, not, it's just before the border. So for now, it is, continues to be a municipal and a provincial jurisdiction. Thank you. Thank you. Je comprends que les gens sont fatigués en ce moment. Franchement, il y, y a beaucoup de gens qui sont au bout, au bout du rouleau. Et puis, euh, mais depuis le début, on fait... Ça a été quoi la pratique? Tu le masque ou de le garder? <rire> euh, alors, c'est ça. Je, je comprends que les gens sont fatigués des mesures. On les tous. Mais en même temps, on travaille très fort depuis le début pour prendre les meilleures décisions basées sur les meilleures informations possibles pour protéger la santé des Canadiens. Puis c'est beau de voir que la grande, grande majorité a participé, a respecté les règles, est allé se faire vacciner. C'est pour ça qu'on voit la sortie. Alors, euh, je pense qu'on va continuer à essayer de, de rallier les gens, de travailler ensemble parce qu'on va sortir. C'est ensemble qu'on va sortir de cette situation-là. Est-ce qu'il est temps d'abandonner la vaccination obligatoire pour les camionneurs? Ce n'est pas une décision qu'on va prendre pour des raisons politiques ou émotives. Il faut les prendre, prendre cette décision-là au bon moment. Et on a quand même des signes, d'après les rapports qu'on a, que ça va dans la bonne direction. On, on va passer au travers, on, on passe à une autre étape bientôt, on le sent, mais ça va se faire sur la base de, de données, d'informations probables. So, Minister Bebo, it sounds like you're simplifying a bit with what your colleague Lightbaum said. It doesn't sound like you're agreeing with him, but it sounds like you're sympathizing with some of the things that he brought up. I understand that many people are tired right now. Uh, these measures are hard on all of us, but I can assure you that we have been working extremely hard from the beginning with the, the best evidence we had to take the best decision to protect the, the health of Canadians. And we will keep doing so. And, and we see, you know, that so many Canadians have uh, been vaccinated. They are following the rules and we're getting through this. We will get through this together and we will keep, you know, following all the evidence we can and to take the, the right decision at the right so moment. So does Mr. Lightbone have a point? Are you saying that he, he, there is a grain of truth in what he's saying? Well, he expresses in his way uh, how tired people are. And in the same time, I'm telling you, we are working extremely hard to get through this. And we will, because I mean, Canadians are, they are expressing that they are tired, but in the same time, we all know what we have to do to get through this crisis, and we will. And, and we see that we're getting there. Minister, do you have any concerns about what's going on at the Ambassador Bridge right now, where the flow of goods coming into the country is being slowed, especially given how much traffic goes across that bridge and brings some food into our country? Well, as the Minister of Agriculture, I'm definitely worried about everything related to our food supply chain. Uh, it is an issue. We are following the situation closely with Minister uh, Al Gabra. Uh, and uh, so we, up till now, we have, tried, we have found ways uh, to make sure that we could get our food through, feed animals, have the, the live animals through uh, during, uh, within the period. So. I follow it closely. Thank you. And just finally, is there room for different views on how to handle the pandemic within the Liberal Party, such as Mr. Lightbaum? Is there room for this kind of disagreement within your, within your caucus, you think? Well, absolutely. I mean, we are a caucus that can share uh, sometimes very different thoughts. And, and we, we know how to do it in a respectful manner. We have our own debates. And at the end of the day, we try to take and the Prime Minister uh, um, receive all this information through different views and he is really committed to take the best decision he can knowing all of that and this is a strength for our team and for our Prime Minister to have these voices that are not always fully aligned but we all work the best we can for the benefit you know to 
to allow the Prime Minister to take the best decision at the end of the day. Donc, M. Lyman peut rester au caucus libéral, si je comprends. Bien, ça, c'est une décision du caucus. Je ne peux pas m'avancer là-dessus. Mais je, ce que je vous dis, c'est... Oui, je sais. Mais ce que je vous dis, c'est qu'au caucus libéral, on est tout à fait libre d'exprimer des voix qui vont être différentes. Parce qu'on croit que c'est une force de notre équipe. Ça permet au premier ministre de prendre une décision qui est le mieux informée possible parce qu'il a entendu des voix différentes. Et vous, Et vous puis, en pensez quoi? Il peut encore faire représenter le caucus québécois? Non, c'est pas... Je, je, mon opinion, c'est pas ça qui est important. Là, je vous dis, moi, oui, on a... <rire> Alors, moi, je, je, on aura cette discussion-là entre, entre collègues, euh, mais c'est correct qu'on ait des voix différentes, qu'on les, qu les exprime de façon… Euh, mais ta voix pour l'exprimer, là, c'est quoi? Moi, ma voix pour l'exprimer, ça va être au sein du caucus. Merci.